what is going on everybody welcome to another episode of gle trying out Streamyard. i mentioned this on the last episode i've had friends that use this for a while but trying to upgrade the quality of these podcasts for y'all so hope you're enjoying it if y'all haven't already make your way over to youtube and subscribe to the bill swanson channel so you can see shorts from these episodes uh, clips from these episodes and uh, more long-form content as well. And if you like watching these episodes, you can actually go and watch the long-form episodes on YouTube. So if you haven't already, go subscribe YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Play, Radio Public, Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Stitcher. So... Head on over to those platforms as well. I personally like the audio platforms because I'm usually listening to podcasts when uh, I'm driving or something like that, you know, so I'm not in a position to be watching a screen. But um, you can still listen on on YouTube as well. But if you would and you like the show, help the show grow. Go share the show on all those platforms. Rate it, review it, and uh, make sure you follow it as well so you don't miss new episodes as they're released. You may notice I'm wearing a lot of GLE today. Got some new gear at uh, goleadeverything.com slash gear. So if you want to go grab some gear, support the show. I've had, I've had a number of people over the years ask me, hey, when are you going to come out with some GLE gear so I can support the show? I've had several of you reach out and already grab some gear. Appreciate that. If you haven't already, go snag some gear. And if you have ideas for gear that you would like to wear and that uh, you want to throw the GLE brand on, let me know. And... Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll uh, we'll make some new gear. We, we're releasing new stuff all the time as uh, we're building up the store. So, yeah, let us know what you're interested in, and we'll see what we can do for you. If you want to raise future generations in a good place, if you want a better place to live right now, this is what the Go Lead Everything Nation movement is all about. So share the show as you go, lead everything, and uh, help grow the show. Help get this mindset out to people and grow the GLE Nation, which is a great segue into what we're going to talk about today, Becoming Your Own Nation. I've been reading this book by Steve Farrar, Point Man. Good book, recommended to me by some good mentors of mine. And um, I wanted to just reference a little bit of this today and share it with you some mindset about starting your own nation this is something that i guess i didn't think of it this way when gle was founded but really this is what gle is all about and uh creating the gle nation you know we um we have an obligation and a duty and roles given to us by almighty god and if you deny those roles, the world then ends up as it is today. So I'm going to jump right in here and just read to you a little bit. This is chapter 11 of Point Man. Go grab this book. I'm not going to give away all the secrets in here. It's worth a read for all you, uh, especially the, the fathers out there, How a Man Can Lead His Family is the subtitle of this book. So um, if you're getting ready to grow a family, or thinking about a family, or already raising a family, this would be a good one for you. Start your own nation. Chapter 11. Even the poorest man has a family. Even the poorest man that has a family is to be prophet, priest, and king in his own house. Did you know that? Did you know that that was your role to your family, to be prophet, priest, and king? That's a Olivier Haywood quote. It was relatively easy to follow Christ in the United States for the first 200 plus years. But as we have seen, those days are over. It used to be that a man who loved the Lord led his family was called a God-fearing man. And that was a compliment. Today, if you're called a God-fearing man, it's likely you're being mocked. That's what happens when a nation dies spiritually, and falls apart. But that doesn't mean we lose hope and dread the future. It just means we have our work cut out for us. 
you wouldn't have read this far if you didn't want to follow Christ and be the point man for your family. So what do you do when the nation continues to pursue darkness instead of light? If the nation you live in is falling apart, then start your own nation. I'm going to read that one again because I have it highlighted. If the nation you live in is falling apart, then start your own nation. Every nation begins with a family, and the nation starts with a man. The book of Acts says of God, he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. Think about it. Somewhere back in history, every nation began with one family. And because we have in the Bible a true record of world events, we can actually pinpoint that somewhere it's described in Genesis 7-1, when the Lord told Noah to take his entire family, including his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and get into the ark for the very first time, rain fell on the earth, and it kept coming over the entire earth for 40 days and 40 nights. The floods covered all the high mountains of the earth, and when the waters finally receded, the ark grounded. There were eight people alive in the world, and no more. When the culture surrounding Noah became hopelessly corrupt and evil, the Lord put him and his family into the ark to save them from judgment. They were the only righteous family on the face of the earth. In our times, in our evil days, things are getting bad. One day, they will get as bad as it was in the days of Noah. Jesus himself told us that the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. In Matthew 24. We may not quite be there yet, but we're sliding fast in that direction. Every nation starts with a man who finds a woman and marries her. I'll read that one again. Every nation starts with a man who finds a woman and marries her. I know of a man who was raised in not only a dysfunctional family, but a destructive family. His family was hell on earth because of the physical and sexual abuse handed down through several generations. His father was the latest addition of that abuse, and evil beyond imagination was practiced in his home. Siblings were destroyed emotionally. Some were even driven to take their own lives. He somehow managed to survive those circumstances and graduate from high school, but he was a bitter young man, full of rage, wanting nothing more than to get revenge on his father. And then he experienced a head-on collision with the Lord Jesus Christ. When that occurred... Brent's plans for revenge were totaled, and all the bitterness drained from him. The Lord Jesus captured him, saved him from his sin, gave him a new heart, and within a couple of years brought along a godly young woman to be his wife. She, too, had come from a destructive home, and neither of them wanted that for their kids. They were committed to the Lord Jesus and to each other. This story was happening in the 60s, and America was starting to die spiritually as it abandoned the Lord and the Scriptures. But this young couple decided to seek the Lord. They both might have been raised in living hells, but in their home, in their new nation, they decided to ask Jesus to be the king and to make the Bible their constitution. Decades later, their children are grown and walking with the Lord. Their kids did not grow up with alcoholic rages and abuse, but rather with the attention, affection, and affirmation of a loving dad and mom. These children were raised in an infinitely superior nation. How can this be done? You start your own nation by realizing that God has already put you into a new nation. The moment that you turn from your sin and call upon the Lord Jesus to save you from it, your citizenship is immediately transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Scripture reminds us of that. I'm going to read this again because that's it's another one I have highlighted. This is a faith thing. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We don't see this with our eyes, but if we have faith, this is what we truly believe as Christians. You start your own nation by realizing that God has already put you into a new nation. The moment that you turn from your sin and call upon the Lord Jesus to save you from it, your citizenship is immediately transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. 
Scripture reminds us of that in First Peter. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are a people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And again, in Ephesians 2, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Make no mistake, we are still citizens of our countries. That is what it says on our driver's licenses and passports and tax forms. But we are also aliens. We are citizens of our countries either by birth or by naturalization, but we can never forget that our true and lasting citizenship is in heaven. You're told to be in the world and not of the world. You're to be in the United States, but not of the idolatry in the United States. So as the nation and culture around you continue to erode and fall apart, you can start your own nation, letting that new identity shape your life and your days. The most important thing a Christian man can do in his lifetime is strive to raise a godly family. All right, you leaders out there, I'm going to read this one again for you. This is an important one to highlight. The most important thing a Christian man can do in his lifetime is to strive to raise a godly family. That's what it means to start your own nation. In your new nation, Jesus is the king and the Bible is the constitution. This new nation comes into being when a man utters from his heart the same words as Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Apostle Paul tells us that every man has a sphere of influence. Influence? Many say leadership is influence. A lot of the leadership... Uh, Godfathers, I guess, like, like the uh, Maxwells, right? Leadership is influence. You have a sphere and orbit of geographical, geographical boundaries where you live your life. You live in a zip code, and in the morning, if you're not working from home, you may drive to work in another zip code. You may go to church in another zip code. For work or a vacation, sometimes you may travel outside your sphere to another state or another country, but you always come home to your sphere. Inside that sphere are people people you know and care about, people you love and who love you, your wife, kids, friends, grandparents, cousins, boss, coworkers, and others. That is your sphere of influence. That sphere begins with your family. That's your central work and your primary place of nation building. It may be just you, your wife, and your kids, but how big will your nation be in a hundred years when you are with the Lord? Because you are following the Lord Jesus, you are a citizen of his kingdom and most important your most important work is to fulfill the Great Commission. The heart of the Great Commission is to make disciples. A disciple is a Christ follower. The Great Commission, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. I'm home with you always to the end of the age, Matthew 28. That, that starts with your nation, your sphere, your influence. And where does it end? Only God knows. Jesus once told his disciples, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Matthew 5. If you have really launched a new nation with Jesus as king and God's word as your guide, roadmap, and constitution, and if you've raised the banner of heaven up your family flagpole, you won't be able to hide it. You're an alien can't tell you how many people tell me, Phil, you know, why are you putting all this religious stuff out? I'm just surprised that you're so bold to share your faith, Phil. Well, like the song, uh, Where I Belong by Building 429, I believe. My, my daughter loves it. We would sing it all the time. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. You're an alien. Your neighbors and coworkers will see it. People moving by you in the dark, people you don't know and may never even meet with the lights of your city 
state and wonder at it. People moving by you in the dark, people you don't know and may never even meet, will see the lights of your city-state and wonder at it. There's no way to measure the impact of a strong, happy Christian family on our dark and delusioned contemporary culture. It all begins with one man. You. Your leadership is critical when the culture around you is crumbling. Quite frankly, I don't have what it takes to lead my family in these troubled times, and neither to you. Apart from the Lord, we can do nothing. But with Him, we can do anything that is demanded of us, no matter what times we're living in. The Lord knows what a man needs in order to lead his family in the 21st century. I'm going to stop there, y'all. Again, if y'all haven't read Point Man, Steve Farrar. It's worth the read. Go check it out. Point Man by Steve Farrar, How a Man Can Lead His Family. And I'll just reiterate a couple of these highlights. The Lord gave clear instructions to the men of Judah to build their little nations and keep living their normal lives in the face of a troubled society. It all begins with one man, you, your leadership. Your leadership is critical when the culture around you is crumbling. The most important thing a Christian man can do in his lifetime is strive to raise a godly family. You start your own nation by realizing that God has already put you into a new nation. You are citizens of the kingdom of God. And if the nation you live in is falling apart, then start your own nation. You are part of a new nation. You are leading as prophet, priest, and king to your family, your own nation. And you're listening to GLE, so you're part of the GLE nation. Sphere of influence, right? I appreciate y'all listening today. I haven't already go grab some gear you can see i'm wearing some stuff today to uh support the gle movement go lead everything.com slash gear if you haven't already go to youtube phil swanson just search phil swanson gle on youtube or just phil swanson you find my ugly mug go ahead and give us a sub and subscribe and uh check out the content we put there if you listen or, or if you don't go to apple podcasts and Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the audio platforms. And go ahead and subscribe. Leave us reviews and ratings over there. That really helps get the show up in the ranking so more people will find it. And, of course, share the show as you go. Lead everything and help grow the GLE Nation.